Today, I'm taking over as the GM for the worst NFL franchise, the Houston Texans. And this video can't end until we hoist the Lombardi Trophy. And my first move as GM will be to trade everyone. Let's start with all the positives. We, of course, have CJ Stroud out of Ohio State, the second overall pick in the draft. He may not be able to read or write, but he can play ball. This is going to be the cornerstone of our franchise. We have a young and very well-developing Damian Pierce. We have one of the best tackles in football in Laramie Tunzel, a solid guard in Shaq Mason. We picked up Dalton Schultz from the Cowboys, who for some reason has white hair. On defense, our highlights are Jimmy Ward, 87 overall. Jalen Petrie is one of the most underrated rookies in the league, probably because he's on the Texans. But this is a 77 overall, 24-year-old, only one year of experience in the league. That's a future team cap. We're definitely hanging on to him. We also drafted Will Anderson. If CJ Stroud was a bit of a gamble and we're not sure on his talent, this is the exact opposite. Will Anderson is a freak of nature, virtually guaranteed to be a dominant factor on this defense, and he has 87 speed, 90 acceleration. He has the core of what could be an absurdly good left end, but we gotta get him there. And at DBs, we have Desmond King. Not a ton of room for him to get much better, but a solid starter. And of course, Derek Stingley as well. Super young, could be super talented. We just gotta get him there. Now let's talk about the bad. We have arguably the worst wide receiver core in the NFL with our primary wide receiver being Robert Woods. We did draft Tank Dell, but he is a 72 overall. The offensive line is quickly depleted. Jack Mason is not getting any younger. Howard is okay. Scruggs is bad. And although Kenyon Green is a star and young, he's only a 69 overall. So hopefully we can improve him as we go. On defense, Will Anderson is carrying a very heavy load. He really doesn't have a lot of help down here. All bronzes except for him. And I think the weakest point of this entire squad is the linebackers. Christian Kirksey's a captain, but he's a 74 overall and he's 31. His backup is Toa Toa, who's a 66 overall, and Corey Littleton is a 70. This team has so much potential, so many players that could be incredible. Will Anderson, Derek Stingley, CJ Stroud, but as it stands, we're not going to win any football games. My plan as GM is very simple. Since we're coming off the worst record, we are also going to have the easiest schedule in the NFL. Our first game is against the Ravens, then we take on the Colts, the Jaguars, the Steelers, the Falcons, the Saints. Saints. Week seven's a bye week. Then we've got the Panthers, the Buccaneers, the Bengals, the Cardinals, the Jaguars, the Broncos, the Jets, the Titans, the Browns, Titans once again, and then the Colts. But truly the greatest asset to the Texans franchise right now is our draft capital. After trading Deshaun Watson to the Cleveland Browns for a ton of picks, we have a lot to work with. And I know I've never done a rebuild before. So please, if you guys have any advice or tips, let me know. But I wanted to rebuild this team because we're already young, already developing, and we still have a lot of capital to use. We have two first round picks in 2025, which of course is determined by how well we play as well as the Browns. I don't predict the Browns are going to be very good either. So these could be some very nice picks for us. And for anyone wondering about the settings, it's all pro simulation, five minute quarters. If that is different than the standard, please let me know. I genuinely have no idea if you guys are going to enjoy this video or not. So it's just a little test run. If you love it, I'll happily rebuild other teams. My strategy for the Texans is simple. We are going to hit the ground running with CJ Stroud. Keeping Shaq Mason and Laramie Tunsil should help. I like the addition of Dalton Schultz, but CJ Stroud needs an elite wide receiver, and I'm not willing to wait for Tank Dell to get there. Stroud has excellent intangibles like speed and acceleration, so I'm going to focus his upgrades on field general. Just continuing to get his accuracies better and better. We get throw accuracy deep, throw accuracy mid. Perfect. But before week one, we're going to believe in our rookie QB and find ourselves a wide receiver. Now we just got to find a team willing to part ways with our wide receiver. An optimal target is somebody like T. T. Higgins. The Bengals do have a ton of depth at wide receiver. T. Higgins is 24 and 6 foot 4. Him and Stroud could be monsters for a long time, but I'm going to have to give up a lot to get T. Higgins. I do want to retain my 2024 first and second round but I could part ways at the third round. And I do anticipate that we will have a significantly better year next year, but I don't know if the Bengals know that. I'd offer our first round pick in 2025, which I don't think will be as high as the Cincinnati Bengals imagine. Additionally, I'll offer Robert Woods, our current wide receiver one. They're probably not that interested in him, but I wouldn't mind offloading him since we won't really use him anyway. A first, a third, and Robert Woods for T. Higgins. Will they bite? Oh, they bit. This is my first ever rebuild. I had no idea if they'd accept that or not. They did accept 
accept the trade. T. Higgins is a Houston Texan. Wait, that was way easier than I imagined it would be. Damn, I thought they were going to try and fleece me. That's a good start. Higgins is looking crispy in his new threads. 6'4", 24 years old. We're going to have to pay him a lot of money. And he gets three superstar abilities. As far as simulating goes, I'm not entirely sure what's the best here. But I'll give him deep in elite, mid in elite, and short in elite. Why not? So we lose future draft capital to put CJ Stroud in an excellent position to win offensive rookie of the year. I think that's a good trade-off. Now, as for defense, there's a lot of work to be done here, but I won't make any adjustments yet. We still have a strong draft pick this year, and I want to see how this season starts out. My goal for this season is just seven wins. I don't anticipate making the playoffs in our first year. I just want CJ Stroud to develop. And if Will Anderson and Jalen Petrie have an amazing year, even better. I expect CJ Stroud to show flashes of greatness. Beat the Ravens and get two plus passing touchdowns with CJ Stroud. I have a feeling he can get the passing touchdowns. I don't think we beat the Ravens here, though. Now we sim to midseason and see just how well our strategy worked. I know it's just a rebuild, but I feel very responsible for how well this team does. At midseason, we're one and five. Not good. Let's see where our players are. Will Anderson is becoming a monster speed rusher. Up to an 80 overall. Still two more skill points. See, I already forgot that I got to do skill points in between every single game. This is my rebuild virginity, guys. You got to give me some time, but I am really excited to see where we can take this team. Will Anderson gets speed, finesse, tackle, and awareness. He's up to an 82 overall. Morale is low in Houston, but damn, he's starting to look good already. 88 speed, 91 acceleration. CJ Stroud's moving up as well, up to a 77 overall, improving his accuracy slowly, but once again, morale is hurting this squad right now. He's got 89 throw power, 85 deep, 87 medium, and 90 short. I think once he gets the 90 pluses, I'll start to go into things like improviser so I can get throw on the run, play action under pressure. Wow, his accuracies are already really solid. Love to see that Tank Dell has three upgrades already, so he's making moves. I'm gonna continue on Playmaker with him. Good lord, that's a lot of stats. I know that Playmaker is the one that gives you just a plethora of stat upgrades. I don't know if that necessarily makes it the best, but damn, he's getting a lot of upgrades right now. Awareness, Juke, Medium, and Spin. Tank Dell, up to a 75, still hidden depth. T Higgins, I'm gonna stick with Physical. I think that's perfect for him, and that's a massive upgrade too. Awareness, Break Tackle, Medium, Release, Short Spec, and Trucking for T Higgins. 96 Spectacular Catch, 95 Catch in Traffic for the big man. We also have a Breakout D Lineman. I wonder if this could be Will Anderson. Will Anderson is still hidden dev and he's already getting an upgrade. I assume he's a star and this will take him to superstar. So this is a pretty massive, pretty massive upgrade for him. Also, so that doesn't happen again. I turned on auto progress players so that my players aren't just sitting on skill points in between these games. I will be using an auto generated class. Technically, I could import guys like Caleb Williams, but that's so far out. I want to try the auto generated rookies anyway, because I've never done it. Probably more fun that way. We actually got a scout. I also need to adjust this depth chart. John Mechie is young. I could keep him there, but Noah Brown's got to move down. He's got six years experience in the league. He's not getting much better. I'm going to move Nico Collins to my wide receiver two, and I'm actually going to move Tank Dell to my wide receiver three. John Mechie currently does feel like a little bit of wasted talent. Maybe I could trade him, but for now, I want my three-man guys to be T. Higgins, Nico Collins, and Tank Dell. I used all my staff points on juicing CJ Stroud. We've got short accuracy, break sack, medium accuracy, and throw under pressure for him, as well as two upgrades into catching for wide receiver and tight ends. This is the season for CJ Stroud. The league leader in passing yards right now is no shocker, Patrick Mahomes. And Anthony Richardson is actually playing very well with 1,500 passing yards. Brock Purdy's at 1,400. Desmond Ritter's at 1,400. Bryce Young's at 1,378. And coming in behind is CJ Stroud. Nine touchdowns, eight interceptions, 64% completion. He's definitely got some work to do. Actually, the only rookie whose dev trait is not revealed right now is Tank Dell. CJ Stroud is star, as well as Will Anderson. Anderson. So this is a confirmed superstar breakout for Will Anderson. Would be massive if he gets it. And we got to look at the prospects in the draft as well. Number one right now is a wide receiver, Max Rhodes. 6'3 out of Louisville. That's a big boy with A catch and A deep route running. His catch and traffic is C. We just don't need a wide receiver. We got T Higgins. Jace Parks. I don't need myself a QB either. And Alex Barrow left tackle. Technically, we could draft a tackle and trade Laramie Tunzel. I don't know. I kind of like Laramie Tunzel. What I wouldn't mind is pairing Will Anderson up with a Another dominant edge rusher. And since my linebacker core is kind of decimated, 
I could draft an edge rusher and move Will Anderson to linebacker, which isn't completely out of the question. Will Anderson is a slightly undersized left end. It's not crazy to think he could be an outside linebacker. There's also a middle linebacker, Trevor Hatchet. He's at pick 10, which might be a little far down for the Texans right now. But obviously, we have no good linebackers. He's out of Michigan State, which I'm obviously a little biased towards. A block shedding, A to C pursuit. His tackle's not great. His zone coverage is not great. This might be my guy, Trevor Hatchet. Physical player who delivers bone-crushing hits. Has a motor that runs through the whistle. That's not right. He's not white. His acceleration is good, great. Speed is good, great. Strength is good, great. Ooh, this really could be our guy. Hit power is AC, finesse AC, block shedding A, play rec A. That might be our guy. We really, really need to shore up where Christian Kirksey is. All right, I'm gonna favorite Trevor Hatchet. We'll see how everything plays out, but Trevor Hatchet is my guy right now. The second half of our season is a lot easier, so hopefully the Texans pick it up a little bit. Not looking good right now, but let's see, boys. <laughs> Second half of the season was so much better. We end here one five and twelve. Yeah, that's not good, but we were one and five midseason. We also end with an eighty-four overall offense, an eighty-two overall defense, and an eighty-two overall. We started this season at a seventy-nine. Anyone interested in the playoffs? Here's who made it: Jets versus Bengals, Jags, Titans, Ravens, Raiders, Chiefs get a buy, Niners get a buy, Panthers, Vikings, Packers. Saints, Cowboys, Cardinals. Tank Dell is up to a 77 and he's still hidden. That's insane. Tank Dell is moving quick. Damian Pierce is an 87 overall power back, but morale is taking him down to 85. God, we are going to have such a good season next year. CJ Stroud's an 83 overall. Everyone's getting a big ding from morale. I understand that. Will Anderson got his breakout. Yes, Will Anderson is a superstar. Jalen Petrie's up to an 81. Didn't develop as fast as I would have liked. And and I think I need to take Derek Stingley and start him over Nelson. Let's let's adjust the depth chart on DBs. But hey, first season went actually kind of how I wanted it to. CJ Stroud all the way up to an 83 overall. Looks like he really closed out the season well. I'm so happy for him. One of the only guys on our team with positive morale. Steven Nelson is no longer DB1. DB1 is actually going to be Derek Stingley. We'll have Desmond King after him and then Shaquille Griffin. Shaquille Griffin's actually pretty good. And in the 2023 season, the Dallas Cowboys win the Super Bowl with Dak Prescott as the MVP. Sure, bud. Uh, Trevor Lawrence wins NFL MVP. McCaffrey's Offensive Player of the Year. Max Crosby, Defensive Player of the Year. Zay Flowers is Offensive Rookie of the Year. And the Defensive Rookie of the Year is Will Anderson Jr. Does that mean Will Anderson is now an X-Factor? I'm pretty sure you get a dev upgrade for that. That's massive. Dalton Schultz went up to a superstar. I don't know how I missed that, but good for him. And Will Anderson is X-Factor. Actor. Not to mention, Jimmy Ward is superstar. Now, Jimmy Ward regressed like crazy. He went from an 87 down to an 83 because he's older, but he did get superstar. I'm kind of shocked that both him and Dalton Schultz got it, but luckily we have no major. Ooh, but take a look at this. T. Higgins X Factor regressed. He went from superstar to star. That's no good. Damn, I didn't know we were going to get clapped like that. Honestly, I didn't even know that could happen. That's all right. We can always earn it back, boys. Will Anderson for winning Defensive Rookie of the Year went from a star to an X-Factor. He went from a 78 overall at the start of this season to what I believe is now a 90. Once I give him these three upgrades. No, it'll be an 89. Will Anderson out to be. Oh my God. Let's just stick with Speed Rusher, man. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Awareness finesse hit power pursuit and tackle acceleration and awareness i like acceleration i don't know about awareness so much awareness power moves pursuit and three to tackle will anderson is a demon already i'm gonna give him unstoppable force does he get edge threat not yet he probably needs 90 yeah he needs 90 for edge threat so we'll be sure to give him that when we can i'm gonna give him no outsiders probably inside stuff and defensive rally is actually really good so bad news on t higgins great news on will anderson taking a look at the mock draft here if we want our boy Trevor Hatchett, we're going to have to trade up. Current mock draft has him falling to the Eagles at 8. Going 5 and 12 actually hurt us a little bit. Not to say that we should have tanked, but our current pick is now pick 15, which should be Cameron Staley. I am very willing to unload some stuff and trade up 
to get Trevor Hatchet. Dude, A block shed, A to C pursuit. Obviously, I could have scouted him a little bit better, but my scouting talents were all in quarterback. So I know a whole lot about Jace Parks, and I would never take him. I'm gonna have to trade up with the Eagles. I'm gonna do all this, and he still could be a bust, but dude, I don't know, man. A block shed on a rookie middle linebacker is crazy. The one thing I forgot to mention is Christian Kirksey did retire. On top of that, we were unable to re-sign Denzel Perryman, so we have to draft a linebacker we literally we are trading up to get trevor hatchet and um we're just we're putting the fate of the franchise in his hands i also wouldn't mind signing a free agent right end because we are looking really thin on this d-line obviously will anderson's will anderson but we draft a linebacker and we sign a right end and i'll feel good let's see what free agents are available wow there's a lot of good free agents available but i don't think i'm gonna pick up any of these top three guys amari cooper rashawn gary mike williams that's out of my that's out of my wheelhouse christian wilkins 87 overall right end he's gonna want a lot of money but we've got 68 million cap he's motivated by our no income tax and a warm weather state obviously he could develop too, man. Imagine Christian Wilkins and Will Anderson. I'm just scared he's going to be a little too expensive. There are also middle linebackers available to sign in free agency. Christian Wilkins wants 20 mil a year, but we could get somebody like Carl Lawson for a little bit less. Let's give Carl Lawson an offer. I'm going to give him a player-friendly three-year offer. Let's see what Carl Lawson thinks. I still plan to draft a middle linebacker but let's see about a potential left or right outside linebacker just to kind of beef up our core because our core is just so bad right now. Willie Gay would not be a bad pickup at all. Already interested in the team. 26. And he's a 77 overall. This would be a really nice free agent sign if we can get Willie Gay. I'm going to give him a three-year bump up his salary a little bit, bump up his bonus a little bit, but I don't want to commit to five years with Willie Gay. I'm fine with a three-year offer. <sighs> I feel like that's a good offer for that. He doesn't like the three-year link, but the overall strength is there. See what Willie Gay does. And to be safe, just in case case we can't get trevor hatchet i would like a little bit of depth at middle linebacker damn none of these dudes are interested they told me to get fucked hey look at that the results are in and both of our offers were accepted carl lawson added in free agency willie gay added in free agency hopefully we pick up trevor hatchet and this team is looking a hell of a lot better on defense already back to an 82 overall oh boys we are developing i do have the cap space to sign a big free agent if I wanted to. But I think I'm just going to hang on to the money. And we can do that in 2025, technically, if we need to. But I don't think we do. I feel good right now. There's no need to shell out a really big contract for one of these guys. There just isn't. Lots of cap room to sign a big free agent next year. After CJ Stroud, Will Anderson, and everybody has developed better. I, I, I love what we're doing here. And, and we're available to re-sign big guys. I think we did great. We just have to draft Trevor Hatch. The question for me is how much do the Eagles value their draft? Pick? I've got round one pick 15. I'm going to offer that. I also have round two pick 35, which is a very high pick in the second round, but I do not care about the second round. I just want Trevor Hatch. Oh no, I got to trade with the Dolphins. I have to go up to seven. Okay. We need the Dolphins first round pick. Wait, they're round one pick two. That's not right. Rams have round one pick six. This would guarantee me Trevor Hatchet. Oh, I'm putting so much faith in the fact that this guy's going to be good. I'm not certain that this guy's going to be good yet. I'm trading my first round pick and a high second round pick to move up nine spots in the draft. I don't really think they go for this. Well, they don't have any cap room. They kind of need the draft capital. I'm going to submit it. Let's see what the Rams think. Oh my God, let's go. Oh, I'm two for two on trades. Let's get it. Now we just need Trevor Hatchet to fall to us. Dude, I swear to God, if I did all that for a 72 overall linebacker, I'm going to cry. We have no second round pick, so it's literally all about this first round pick here. Round one, pick one. Bears on the clock. The Bears take left end Mike Fisher out of Alabama. In the mocks, it had the Dolphins taking Trevor Hatchet, but that's when they were pick seven. So I imagine they won't take him here, right? Max Rhodes, let's go. That was the number one wide receiver in the class. Cardinals select Alex Barrow, left tackle USC. Okay, Lions, I swear to God. Lions, you got Jack Campbell last year, bro. You do not need the middle linebacker. Drew Franklin, you're not Trevor. Come on! Buccaneers, don't do it. Don't cuck me. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Zachary Cameron. Oh, please, bro. You better be good. I swear to God, this guy's a bum. Jace Parks is projected next. Then Troy Brooks. Then Zeke Carey. Then Kion Claiborne. QB, QB, QB wide receiver. Technically, I could have traded with somebody else for a different pick, but I had to secure this man. A block, A block shed. A block shed tells me everything I need to know. Trevor Hatchet middle linebacker out of Michigan State University draft. Trevor Hatchet! Oh my god! Holy shit! Holy shit!
shit, 89 speed, 91 acceleration. This guy's a dog. 82 agility, 81 jump, 79 strength, 76 change of direction is not great for a user, but I'm not technically using him. Oh my God, I, I guess his, his overall is a question mark. I didn't know that's how that worked. I figured it would tell me right now, but awareness A, block shed A, play rec A. Oh my God, he's nasty. A play rec is crazy. Pursuit A to C pop. Oh my God, this dude's a monster. His tackle being B to D is not very good for a middle linebacker. That's, it, you definitely want that to be higher. You definitely want that to be higher. That's the centerpiece to our defense. And he's added there with Carl Lawson and Willie Gay. I'll advance to our next user pick, but this isn't until round four, pick three. I, I literally didn't even scout this far. I'm sorry if most people do, but man, the round four, I mean, come on. Um, I will take Raheem Parham, a Georgia Tech corner. 91 acceleration, 92 speed. Low key, not bad. Normal dev with a bunch of dog shit stats. All right. Whatever, I didn't expect much. And just like that, boys, year one is in the books. Headed into year two, we're four overalls higher. 83 overall, 85 offense, 81 defense. Hatchet, whoa! It didn't show me overalls, but I can see it now. Hatchet was a 78, and he's already got an upgrade from the preseason. This is my boy, man. I'm so glad we traded up. Tank Dell's about to be up to a 78. Juice Scruggs to a 72. Great work, everybody. All right, boys, about to kick off season two. Hoping for a big year out of Tank Dell. A bounce back here for T. Higgins. An amazing season out of C.J. Stroud. Potentially a superstar for Pierce or Stroud. <laughs> Dude, we can even go defensive player of the year on Will Anderson. And I'm I'm excited to see this new look defense and see just how good Hatchet actually is. Maurice Jones Drew is one of my potential scouts. I'm going to hire Logan Mankin. His expertise is in interior offensive line and D tackle. I may end up drafting a center or a D tackle in this upcoming draft if I don't trade away my draft pick. So I'm going to hire him. Ah, just kidding. I got to fire someone first. Ugh. Jeremiah Coleman. Sorry, buddy. Oh, wait. I have to fire Jack Morales. His expertise is in quarterbacks, and I certainly don't need one of those. Now we can hire Logan Mankin. <laughs> oh my God. Year two. Are you kidding me? The Houston Texans are five and one. The Detroit Lions are one and five. This same time, literally just last year, we were one and five. We really didn't unload that much draft capital or lose any significant players. Our free agency signings, T. Higgins, and the progression of our young players is actually spectacular. And now that I think about it, Rebuilding the Texans technically is easy because their rebuild is partially done. Maybe I shouldn't have broke my rebuild virginity with this team because this is spectacular. CJ Stroud is boosted morale-wise by four. Damian Pierce up to an 89. T. Higgins, 93. Tank Dell's an 80. Schultz is an 85. The offensive line's looking spectacular. And on defense, Hatchet is up to an 80. He's a star dev, as we imagined. Petrie's up to an 83. Stingley's an 83. And Will Anderson is a 92 raw, boosted to a 93. Will Anderson has got to be having a hell of a season. All right, let's look around the league to see how everybody's doing. CJ Stroud is already making a huge improvement from last year. Second most passing yards in the league, though, Tyler Huntley, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He has 13 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. Mahomes, once again, leads with a 20 and 2. Josh Allen, 18 and 2. So obviously really good stats from that. The new rookie for the Vikings is going off, Zeke Carey. 12 and 10, 1,700 passing yards. Justin Fields. Fields is up there 14 and 4. Shiesty is 17 and 1. Dak is 13 and 1. But take a look at CJ Stroud. Holy shit, what a season he's having already. CJ Stroud, 1,640 passing yards, 12 touchdowns two interceptions. I'm honestly just shocked that he's getting outplayed by this rookie. I shouldn't say that. He's not getting outplayed. CJ Stroud has a much better touchdown to interception ratio, but this dude, he's fifth in the league in passing yards as a, as a rookie. Although the good news is that means CJ Stroud is almost in the MVP running already. Let's take a look at the weekly awards, see if any of our guys got one. CJ Stroud was the AFC player of the week in week six with 300 passing yards, three passing touchdowns. And he also got it in week one where he threw for 346 passing yards, Four touchdowns, and he threw 27 for 30. He's been going off, man. Damian Pierce so far this season is okay. 433 yards, two touchdowns halfway through the season. Ramon Green actually has more touchdowns than Damian Pierce. He's sharking those. Yeah, if you're playing fantasy, you are not happy about that. Receiving my number one receiver thus far this year is John Mechie. Tank Dell is down here at fourth. 
John Mechie's got four touchdowns. Schultz has got four. And T. Higgins only got two. Mechie is making the most of his 25 receptions, though. A lot of yards on those receptions. I wonder if it has to do where he lands in the depth chart. So I'm going to go take a peek at the depth chart and rearrange things. Because I really don't want John Mechie to be the guy who takes over. I want it to be Tank Dell or T. Higgins. Preferably, probably T. Higgins. God, it's almost seeming like I didn't need to trade for T. Higgins at all. I could have just raw dogged the Texans lineup and be going crazy. Obviously, the free agent signings were really big, and Hatchet was an amazing pick, but damn, I could have gotten, got drafted another good player in this year. So let's take a look. So wide receivers right now, it is John Mechie, my third string, who's getting the most reps. I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. Don't really know why the third string wide receiver would be getting more yards than the second string, but I'm going to move Tank Dell to third string and see if he progresses faster like that. We're going to sim up to the playoffs. Don't tell me we're going to win a Super Bowl in season two. That just doesn't feel right. The good news is we're a great great team, but we also have a really easy schedule, kind of like how the Philadelphia Eagles had it last year in the NFL. We were 5-12, and 12, so we're not facing tough competition. The AFC South isn't particularly strong either, so this regular season, pretty nice one for us. Let's see how we close the season out, though. I'm taking a pause at week 17. The Houston Texans are 11-4 and four already. We have an 88 offense. We're an 85 overall with an 83 defense. We're progressing at an absurd rate, thanks to just how young and talented this team is. Let's see what's changed in those eight or nine games we just simmed through. CJ Stroud is an 86 overall, but morale is taking him up to a 91. Dalton Schultz is boosted. Damian Pierce is boosted. T. Higgins, he's a 93 overall, but he's star dev, which is crazy. I really want him to be back a superstar, but we haven't gotten that opportunity. Tank Dell is rocking an 80 overall still, and John Mechie at an 81. On defense, Will Anderson is a 94. Carl Lawson looks to be doing well. Desmond King, Stingley's up to an 83. Petrie in 83, and Hatchet is now in 82. Dude, this boy's been killing it, man. I do want to take a look at the prospects, though. We're already doing so good. Just super weird. I, I feel like, like, is something wrong here? Or are the Texans just this good of a team to rebuild? I feel like this should have taken me like four or five years. I must be doing something wrong. Please let me know. Or I guess I'm doing everything right, but I just used too easy of a team. Lance Moore is too high for him to fall to us. Hey, actually, let's take a look at the mock. Let's take a look at the mock. Our first round pick is is going to be deep in the first round and honestly our team is already so good that i almost want to trade it i feel like i'm doing a los angeles rams here and i'm saying fuck them picks and i'm just trading all my picks but gosh we're 11 and 4 we're ready to win a super bowl either this year or next year i don't think i need a rookie i'm definitely kicking the can down the road but take me to the playoffs i want to see who we're playing we flipped our record oh my god we started this franchise with our very first game against the baltimore ravens they shit on us and we went 5 and 12 that season and the very next season after trading for t higgins draft Drafting a stud middle linebacker and signing a few defensive studs and developing our rookies. The Houston Texans fully flipped their record from 5-12 and 12 to 12-5. and 5. And who do we take on but the Baltimore Ravens? Now, they have the overall advantage on us by a, a long shot. They're an 88 overall with 88 defense, 89 offense. We're an 85. But we lead the NFC South by far, and we made the playoffs. Let's talk to the media about this. Coach, you're heading into your first playoff game. Playoff success often makes or breaks a career. I'm going to guarantee a win against the Baltimore Ravens. And I'm actually going to watch the sim on this one. This will be the first game where we actually watch the sim and potentially step in. Is that cheating? Guys, how do rebuilds work? Do I have to literally sim everything? Or am I allowed to step in and play offense every once in a while? Bullets and boarded, guaranteeing a win has fired up the Ravens. They'll have plus five break tackle and hit power. Damn, maybe I made the wrong call. You guys will have to let me know for future rebuilds. But I'm going to watch the sim and potentially step in. But I'm hoping the Houston Texans don't need it because right now we are hot. We are 12 and 5. I hope it's just not because of our cakewalk schedule. Schedule, oh, we got some massive upgrades to make before the playoffs. So look at how absurdly fast Will Anderson has developed. In two years of NFL football, he's gone from a 78 to a 94 overall. And scratch that, he's gone to a 95. Now, granted, he did win Defensive Rookie of the Year, which gave him a significant boost. But he just got acceleration, finesse, play rec power, and another 
ability slot. Let's check in on his stats. Dude, if, if I can pick him up in my actual CFM fantasy draft, which by the way, if you're watching this when it drops, my CFM fantasy draft is tomorrow, August 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern. So pull up. Damn, if I can get Will Anderson. He's the number one ranked left end in the league after two years. 98 finesse, 89 speed, 94 excel. This is a, a demon. He's got run commit there, but we're going to give him edge threat since it is definitely one of the best abilities in the game. He doesn't get edge threat elite unless he's power rusher. Obviously, we can't take it, but I'm more than happy to go with edge threat. I cannot believe he got that good that fast. Trevor Hatchet, the man himself, dude. So Trevor Hatchet was drafted at a 78. He's all the way up to an 83. So five overall upgrades in his rookie year. Blockchain pursuit tackle and zone coverage. Let's make sure we look around the league to see who's going to win what awards though. 89 speed, 89 tackle, 88 block shed, 87 hit power, 90 pursuit, 91 excel. That is such a fucking good linebacker. Like obviously his coverages are dog shit, man and zone. But like, oh my God, as far as a true run stopping or user middle linebacker, this is as good as it gets. That was one hell of a draft pick. And I'll auto upgrade the rest. It looks like Willie Gay and Carl Lawson, those free agency signings did not hurt the bank too much, but they played great. All right, let's look around the league to see where everybody landed and what the season awards are looking like. Let's go to the yearly awards. Dude, CJ Stroud is insane. CJ Stroud ends seventh in MVP voting. That is actually so impressive to me. His first year, he doesn't even win Offensive Rookie of the Year. And in his second year, he damn near got MVP. The MVP of the league is Dak Prescott. The Cowboys are just taking over the league, apparently. They won the Super Bowl last year. Dak's now MVP. Runner-up is Josh Allen, then Patrick Mahomes. Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Roger, CJ Stroud. And I'd say the biggest shock? There are honestly no big shocks in this MVP running other than probably CJ Stroud. You've got Lawrence Fields, Tug of Iloa. A lot of the younger guys taking over. Aaron Rodgers is one of the vets still in there, but wow. Now let's go to Coach of the Year. Doesn't look like D'Amico Ryans is going to get it, but he ended third. I'm, I'm pretty happy with him about that. Offensive Player of the Year in the AFC. This is interesting. So CJ Stroud is MVP at seventh, but as far as Offensive Player of the Year goes, he lands ninth. That's because we got beat out by guys like Tyler Boyd, Pacheco, Kelsey, Josh Jacobs. Ball got in the running air. Defensive Player of the Year, Will Anderson finds himself at 10. I'm really happy that he's there, but uh, I mean, he got beat out by Ed Oliver, Patrick Queen, who we actually had an opportunity to sign Patrick Queen in free agency, but I like what we did. Offensive Rookie of the Year, no shocker here. It goes to Max Rhodes. That was the highest touted uh, rookie, so he can take that one. But Ramon Green, the running back that we drafted late, actually got auto drafted ends up getting 10th so it looks like he got more reps than i expected him to defensive rookie of the year the houston texans breed defensive rookie of the years can you believe this back to back years the houston texans are gonna deliver on a defensive rookie of the year trevor hatchet is gonna be a superstar next year runner up was mario craig mario craig i believe was the first overall pick he was the left end out of alabama i don't think the bills drafted him though i think the bills must have traded for him which is interesting to see that they traded away their first pick but it doesn't matter because he got runner-up and Trevor Hatchet. Hell yeah, man. Best QB, Stroud is sixth. Best running back, Damian Pierce is sixth. Not bad. Best wide receiver, John fucking Mechie. No matter what I do, John Mechie's gonna ball out for the Houston Texans. Shit, man. He must be a dog. Maybe I shouldn't have bumped him down, man. He knows what he's doing. Nobody on O-line. On D-line, Will Anderson is eighth. On linebacker, we've got nobody. On DB, we've got Jalen Petrie making it to seventh there. We will take that. Kicker, Brandon McManus ends up at sixth. And that is the awards around the league. Now, let's take a look at the stats as far as our team is concerned. So, C DJ Stroud ends the regular season as the third most passing yards and a spectacular touchdown to interception ratio. Now, keep in mind, boys, I know that switching your playbooks affects the simulated stats. I switched our playbook to Kansas City Chiefs to allow for CJ Stroud to get as many passing yards as possible. As far as rebuilds go, is that unfair? Like, is what I did not allowed? I've watched some other YouTubers do rebuilds. It seems like they do this, but if you guys don't like that, Please let me know. This is all new content for me. This ain't Wheel of Mutt. So I want this to be the best experience for you guys. Holy shit. In year two, CJ Stroud, now an 85 overall, boosted to a 91 with morale. Spectacular QBR. 116.3. The two guys in front of him have slightly, slightly better, but goddamn, he played so good. 8.5 yards per attempt. Threw an 85-yard bomb. Played a lot of downs, though. 1,036 down compared to Mahomes' 981. This is an amazing season for CJ Stroud. Rushing yards. Yeah, when you run Chiefs offense, you're 
they're not really in the running for rushing yards. But Damian Pierce still ends up what looks to be about 18th in the league. And Nick Chubb's just barely ahead of him. Leading the league in rushing yards this season was Jacobs, Kenneth Walker in second, McCaffrey, Barkley, and B. John Robinson. Receiving, I got to imagine, it's John Mechie. John Mechie eclipses 1,000 yards, but it actually looks like we were really distributing the ball, and that had to probably do something with my depth chart adjustments. But if I go ahead and look just at the Houston Texans, we've got John Mechie with 1,000. Dalton Schultz getting crazy involved, which makes sense. It's Chiefs offense. They use Travis Kelsey a lot. But Dalton Schultz continues to progress really, really well. T. Higgins, two yards short of the 1,000-yard mark. Tank Dell going for 682. I'm almost getting to a point where do I switch John Mechie and Higgins? Do I put John Mechie at wide receiver one? Because John Mechie, on only his 75 receptions, made 1,100 yards out of that. But Higgins has 91 receptions. He didn't make a lot out of his receptions. I think there's more to this story that I'm not understanding. So I don't want to go messing with anything right now. But I am very happy with how the team is doing. And then defensively leading the team in tackles is Trevor Hatchett had 132 tackles on the season. He had one interception. Two interceptions for Desmond King, one for Stingley, and four for Jalen Petrie. Also had a forced fumble from Willie Gay. What about Will Anderson? Will Anderson with nine sacks on the season. That's honestly a little low. I kind of expected a little more out of Will Anderson, but I didn't put edge threat on him until just now. So I think that would have would have boosted those stats. I would say even though Will Anderson is still a stud, he definitely had a much better year one than year two. This is a this is a bit underwhelming for how good Will Anderson is. I would say nine sacks. I mean, Carl Lawson, who is star dev, 10 overalls lower, no abilities, had five and a half sacks. And Will Anderson only had nine. I want to see more out of Will Anderson, but still, I I'm most happy about CJ Stroud. This was our game plan going in, was to get CJ Stroud to be juiced to the fucking gills and... That's exactly what he is. So that is one hell of a season from everyone. John Mechie's breaking out. Did not expect that. Let's play the wild card, baby. I guess the fairest way is for me to play the moments, right? It's the fastest way to play, and I'm not determining every single down. I think that's fair. The 86 overall Houston Texans in their wild card playoff debut. Take it on the Baltimore Ravens. Simming the first quarter. Texans are on the board of the field goal into the second quarter. First quarter in the books, 3-0 lead. Ravens score. Texans fall flat. Oh, no. 14-3. It's not looking good right now. Can the Texans get on the board 21 to 3? See, this is where I feel like I would defeat the purpose of everything if I just jumped in and took over and won this game. I can't do that, no. Maybe I will next season if it's close. But to come in here and erase this deficit, I think that's unfair. Yo, Texans damn near came back. We almost came back, but we fall short to the Baltimore Ravens. I can't say I'm shocked. I think our record of 12 and 5 was a little bit inflated due to the fact that we had a poverty schedule. So year three will be the real test. CJ Stroud made it to the playoffs, but falls short to the Baltimore Ravens. I guess I don't know how it's supposed to go, but I would have felt very, I would have felt like I was cheating. If I just jumped in there and started taking over, I don't think I would have liked that. Let's take a look at the stats though. CJ Stroud, 17 for 30. Lamar, 17 for 21. Much more efficient with the ball in his hands. Stroud did have a touchdown. Lamar and J.K. Dobbins were going crazy. Damian Pierce fumbled in a one-possession playoff game. You can't be fumbling. And receiving, who else but John fucking Mechie, man. Doesn't matter where I put this guy. He's going to go off. Higgins did have a big game, too. Schultz, three for 46. Tank Dell for three for 25. Hey, I think this is incredible experience for all our young guys to just make the wild card playoff. It was our first shot at the playoffs. We don't make it past the wild card, but I think we're in an, just an absurdly good position right now. Tough loss here for the Houston Texans, but all hope is not lost. The 2024 season comes to a close. Let's see who won the Super Bowl and then decide what we're gonna do about this upcoming draft. The 2024 season recap. The Super Bowl MVP is Kirk Cousins on the Falcons, who beat the Miami Dolphins. Dak Prescott wins back-to-back -back MVPs. Mike McCarthy wins back-to-back -back Coach of the Year. The Offensive Player of the Year is CeeDee Lamb. Max Rhodes, Offensive Rookie of the Year. And as we knew, our middle linebacker, Trevor Hatchett out of Michigan State, wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. That's so amazing to get Will Anderson, then Hatchett, because now Hatchett is superstar. Hatchett did not get a breakout during the season. Honestly, if I had two superstar X-Factors just off of straight, raw rookie development, that would have been insane. But oh my God! Oh my God! Making it to the play 
playoffs was huge for these gentlemen. Dalton Schultz is a superstar X Factor. CJ Stroud is a superstar. Trevor Hatchett's a superstar. Jalen Petrie's a superstar. Ooh, Desmond King regresses to normal dev. Derek Stingley stays at star. Dawkins is up to a 74. Okay, this is good. Hey, we lost in the wild card, but this is an amazing win of a season. Our team is so young and so good. We are set up for success for so, so long. Jalen Petrie, I'm going to give him deflator and I'm going to give him strip specialist. I don't really know how that works in sim, but I'm just going to try it out. I do have a lot of learning to do with these rebuilds, but wow, this is actually so fun. I am praying you guys enjoy this. I'm be honest, because if you don't, I'm going to be bummed out to not do this again. And instead of the abilities that Schultz currently has, I'm going to give him double me. I'm going to give him tank. Such a good ability. I'll give him mid out elite and he can stick with bruiser. My question to you guys is if I gave him an ability like route apprentice, will the simulation CPU Bryce Young actually use that? Like will Bryce Young actually use route apprentice to his advantage? I suppose if I give Bryce Young hot route master, then the sim Bryce Young will make audibles. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Bryce Young is an 87 overall field general with an absurd amount of morale, taking him up to a 92. His abilities are disgusting though. Let's let's tweak this. I'm gonna give him tight out, which is improve the catching prowess of all tight ends who are open on pass plays. He's using Dalton Schultz a lot. And Dalton Schultz is now a superstar X Factor. So inside dead eye, tight out. And lastly, I guess I don't know what's the next best thing here, but I'm gonna give him sideline dead eye because he's got inside dead eye and sideline dead eye. So he'll have dead eye on a lot of different throws he makes and he'll be boosted when throwing to Dalton Schultz. So that's beautiful. Now call me crazy, but I'm actually thinking about jumping ship on T Higgins. This is a big move I wanna make. Number one, we have round one pick 28. I don't see a lot of value in round one pick 28. At pick 28, our realistic options are a few wide receivers. There's a D tackle and a halfback. Obviously, you know, we could come a little bit lower here, but I don't see the value here. I think we should trade this pick, bundle it with T Higgins, and get ready to win next year. I don't know if we need T Higgins. Tank Dell and John Mechie have been great. T Higgins has been underperforming for what we thought he would do, and Nico Collins is still on this roster. Not to mention the reason that we got T Higgins was to help CJ Stroud develop. Well, CJ Stroud has developed and T Higgins just doesn't seem necessary. I think it's wasted talent. Upgrades we could use as a right tackle upgrade to keep CJ Stroud protected. We could obviously use a little bit of help on defense. Another elite linebacker would really help this roster. And Jimmy Ward's getting to the point where Jimmy Ward is probably only on this team for another year. Before we make those trades though, let's see who's available in free agency. Damn, an update on defense. Tried to re-sign Desmond King. He doesn't want to come back. Now that's okay because Desmond King did regress a little bit and Dawkins is a DB we actually recently drafted who's all the way up to a 74 overall. DBs are a little thin right now on this squad though. Derek Stingley's nice. Jalen Petrie's awesome. But Jimmy Ward's getting worse. And I don't know, my CB3 now is Texada or Parham, another rookie. I don't know about that. But we have an absurd amount of cap space. We're going to be able to sign a monster monster free agent let's see who we can land there are some excellent guard options which i would like the idea of getting a really solid guard but what i really need is a tackle what are the right tackles in free agency lyle collins is in free agency highly interested in our team 11.8 mil a year though for him is expensive the tackle market is just Wow, that's expensive. I'm gonna give him a player-friendly two-year deal. Damn, he's getting paid though, man. He's getting paid. That'd be nice. That'd be a nice upgrade for CJ Stroud though. The big signing I wanna make though is that linebacker. The best left outside linebackers that I could realistically get would be Frankie Louvu, Odafe Owe. Ooh, Odafe Owe. Young, 89 speed left outside linebacker. If we could sign him, oh boy. Khalil Mack is available, but he's too old for me. I'm looking for Odafe Owe. Nowhere near as expensive as Lyle Collins. I'm gonna give him a player-friendly deal as well. We've got the bread for this. We can afford this. My only concern is down the line, CJ Stroud's gonna want a Supermax, but I just don't have to worry about that right now, to be honest. I wanna win a Super Bowl. I'm gonna make Odafe Owe a really good offer here, and he most likely will accept that. I think if we're gonna make a big signing, it almost should be a DB. The options are Byron Murphy, Chidobia Wujie, and Taron Johnson. I think I'm highest on Shadobi Wujie, but he wants, he wants to get paid too. We've got the cap room for this. I'll be honest with you guys. I don't really understand cap room all too well, but I see that the Texans have a lot of remaining cap. So 
I'm going for it. I'm going to give him a very favorable deal. I'd like to hang on to him for three years. Ah, let's go two, but just bump up his salary and bump up his bonus. That's a good offer. If we get Shinobi Awujie, Odafe Owe, and Lyle Collins, I'm definitely trading my draft pick then. I'm trading my draft pick, and I'm trading T. Higgins if this all goes through. I even could sign a wide receiver. Oh, shit. I almost lost Nico Collins. I didn't even realize that. You better come back, buddy. We're just throwing money at people. We're, we're just the fucking piggy bank right now. We definitely got some signings. Just how OP was this free agency? Lyle Collins has signed to the Houston Texans. That offensive line looking a lot better. Kenyon Green's developed great. Shaq Mason's still kicking. There are going to be Tunzel still kicking. Do Scruggs is whatever, but we're, we're past first, so we don't really need to hat back dive behind our center. And Lyle Collins, I love that upgrade. Defensively, Odafe Owe does agree to sign with the Houston Texans, and so does Shadobi Awujie. So we bolster our DBs. We bolster our linebackers. Willie Gay is still in there from our last free agency signing. We're sitting nice at an 86 overall, and we are ultra thin at D-tackle. D-tackle is not looking good at all. Is there a way we can sign a D-tackle? Do I need to trade for one? Let's look at free agency who's available at the D-tackle position. We might just have to throw some money at a bum. I'm going to pick up Levi on Wuzurike. He's young. He doesn't really have a spectacular ceiling, but he's better than what I got in there. So we'll bid on Levi on Wuzurike. And now it's time to potentially make this trade that I'm talking about. I'm not quite ready to make a trade yet. So let's get to mid-season of next year and see if we need to. But first thing we got to do is the draft. A round one pick 23. D tackles best case scenario from here. I'm gonna take Daniel Vasquez. 74 speed, 93 strength. I'm glad I got a really solid D tackle. Daniel Vasquez is a 76 overall. That's actually a really solid pick here. 93 strength, 75 block. That's not bad, man. 82 tackle, 83 excel, 76 play rec. He's no Trevor Hatchet, but to get a 76 overall, that deep, pretty nice. The rest of the draft was nothing special. We got uh, an 87 speed wide receiver. 91 speed wide receiver. Nothing special here. Now, I don't want to say that this has to be our season, but after this season, there's a lot of players who are going to want a serious contract. And we're going to start running out of money fast. Namely, CJ Stroud. Dalton Schultz is going to start wanting to get paid. He's an X-Factor tight end. And defensively, Will Anderson and Jalen Peachy are going to want some big contracts too. One thing's for certain though, the schedule we have this season is going to be a lot tougher. I'm headed to mid-season of 2025. Come on, Tex. Ooh, yo, the week eight matchup is legit too. Five and two Texans taking on the five and two Cincinnati Bengals. Next man up, discuss being without a top player this week? I don't have injuries on. What are you talking about? T Higgins was seen limping around the facility. I guess we're telling John Mechie to step up, but honestly, we kind of figured John Mechie was going to step up anyway. I guess because it's one of those like scenarios that he can actually be injured. John Mechie and Tank Dell slowly but surely upgrading. Offensive line looks good. CJ Stroud up to an 89 overall. And defense Defensively, Vasquez is a star dev. Good to see. Jimmy Ward, man, he's regressing fast. He's starting to worry me. Odafe Owe is upgrading nicely. Trevor Hatchet up to an 86 overall. Let's give him that run stopper. What do you got? Come on, give me speed. Zone play rec man block shit awareness. Spectacular, man. Passing leaders, CJ Stroud in second. Just barely behind Dak Prescott, but he does have four more touchdowns. CJ Stroud could very well be in the MVP running right now. In fact, he definitely is. Second in sacks, Will Anderson. Will Anderson with edge threat made a huge difference. He already almost has as many sex as he had last year. This is the Texans here right here, man. Take us to the playoffs, baby. I'm ready to win the bowl. Oh my God. Dude, our schedule really was that tough. We didn't make the playoffs. Hey, listen, we still got 56 million salary cap. We can re-sign the guys that we need to re-sign, but holy shit. Alarms are sounding in the Texans facility right now. How did we not make it? T. Higgins is up to a 94. Tank Dell and a... Damn, I knew it. I should have traded T. Higgins. Oh, I should have traded T. Higgins in that draft pick and loaded up on something. John Metchie and Tank Dell are developing great. Defensively, Will Anderson is a fucking hard 99 and we didn't make the playoffs vasquez up to an 81 excellent draft pick carl lawson's doing good willie gay hatchet low on morale looks like we went on a losing streak to close the season we're on 90 overall we went on a losing streak to close the season year three yearly awards cj stroud eighth in mvp voting he's not quite there defensive player of the year third was will anderson oh we broke our streak but yo daniel vasquez got kind of close coming in at fourth all right i am making the biggest off-season push that is humanly possible dude i totally thought i was like rebuilds are easy ggs that's a super bowl nope now we gotta play big time damage control damian pierce leaves in free agency unable to re-sign him we lose a running back so signing a free agent running back 
I'm totally fine with that. I could also draft one. Tyler Algier, 86 overall. He doesn't want that much money. That's my guy. He's heavily interested. Let's lock him down for three years. He's signing. I love Tyler Algier. That's amazing. Let's sign a big player for something else. This is fully and I'm going to win a Super Bowl right now and that's it. We can afford Jalen Ramsey for one year and we go for the Super Bowl right now. I'm fucking sending it. Jalen Ramsey, you're a Houston Texan. If he accepts. I expect them both to sign. Tyler Algier definitely signed. I don't know about Jalen Ramsey, though. Oh, and Jalen Ramsey does sign. Jalen Ramsey has regressed, though. He regressed in overall. He's regressed down to a start dev. Nasty DBs. If you don't look at Bolden. Solid linebacker core. Not spectacular, but a solid linebacker core. And then D-line, obviously anchored by our literal 99 overall. Look at this young, developing free safety on the Eagles. A.J. Warner. He's 23 years old. He's already an 82. Let's see if they'll do A.J. Warner for just our first our round one pick 17 holy shit maybe the eagles see something in the draft or something but they hand over their young 82 overall free safety to now the 91 overall houston texas no way we done next year they're gonna have a mid schedule and we are fucking stacked week one Derek stingley is not progressing as fast as i imagined he would to be honest but he's still an 87 overall super happy for him but shit will anderson's making everybody else look like they're progressing slow houston texans we need to get it together pronto nothing looking too different some players are progressing some are regressing we still got our two superstar x factors on offense three superstars on our one x factor on defense there we go houston there we go last time we were here in the playoffs we're in 85 i really like our odds our opponent is hot the colts are hot let's see what the squad's looking like now jonathan taylor's a 97 but he's a star dev you got 99 overall boosted cj Stroud. tyler all year with a great season higgins up to a 96 schultz is still killing it and defensively will anderson carl law Austin Ramsey got our young free safety pickup, AJ Warner, Hatchet, and Jalen Petrie. And yearly awards around the league. CJ Stroud is getting so close to MVP, but gets beat out by Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. I don't mind getting beat out by those guys. Coach of the year goes to D'Amico Ryan's well deserved. Offensive player of the year is Josh Jacobs. Looks like Will Anderson had a bit of a regression this year, goes down to ninth. Tank Dell gets seventh in best wide receiver. Jalen Ramsey ended up being a big signing in free agency. He got fifth as far as best DB goes. And we actually made it here to the playoffs. No more talking, boys. It's time to get the Houston Texans a Lombardi trophy. Because if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right now. We lose Jalen Ramsey after this season. We start negotiating some big contracts. We got to win. Super wild card weekend. CJ Stroud versus Anthony Richardson. This is an awesome, awesome matchup. Texans on their opening drive drill the field goal colts drill theirs already a close game texans score stop the colts another field goal i might not have to step in here six to 13 22 seconds left in the second quarter i'm gonna put some icing on this drive here let's let tank dell do this if he's there i won't force it tank dell you dog what a release Texans are kind of shitting on the colts i'm not even gonna lie i don't really need to step in again why not right they're giving us the option let's play it Dalton Schultz looks stupid open, and he is. Can you get there? Look at CJ Stroud. Just geared out, man. This guy's on trend. He's got to be. Don't tell me the same shot's open. Dalton Schultz. <laughs> Defense really came in big. We only needed to score seven to win that. CJ Stroud throws 27 for 36. Four touchdowns. Good God. Algier and Stroud get an upgrade. Stroud's going up to a 98 overall. He's literally one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Tyler Algier, our nice little free agent signing, is now an 87 overall. I'm sad we lost Damian Pierce, but if anybody's sad right now, it's Damian Pierce himself. An absolute stomp in the wild card. We're on to the divisional. Browns versus Houston. Home field advantage once again in the divisional. CJ Stroud taking on Deshaun Watson. Three to zero right now. I gotta keep looking to beat these seams against this zone. Oh, Tank Dell might have that same touchdown he had last time. Oh my god! Tank Dell? Tank Dell is a monster! Brown's unable to score, and we're back on offense. It's third and seven. We're in scoring range. I like that. I like that easy pickup from T. Higgins. I'm gonna go a wide zone handoff. This is coming towards Miles Garrett's side. But we got Schultz blocking. Oh, cut it up. Oh, sheer! That was too easy. We got a hefty lead on the Browns, but let's not let him score again, right? Uh-oh. 11 to 14. It's the fourth quarter. I want to stay on to Sean Watson's head. Yup! Yup! Willie Gay with two sacks! Five tackles tonight. I don't gotta get fancy here. Oh, somebody get to Sean. Does he slide? He, okay, he's five wide. 
He checks down. I can't get a massive hit with Hatchet. Zone's not working for me right now. We're going to switch the man. We're double manned up on someone for some reason. That's not good. I got to stay with 11. Oh, we're there. Great defense. We're going to fly on Deshaun. We're guessing the snap count. Let's go. Hatchet. All the way. Deshaun fumbles. It's picked up by Wyatt Teller. Damn. Hey, we held him to a field goal. Eddie Pinheiro could shank it. Come on, baby. Now he drills it. Great work. Single back, bunch, verticals. We've got three timeouts. Got a double team on Miles Garrett. I can roll. There's Dalton Schultz. Money. 14 to 14. Oh my God. No. Bat it down. I thought Tinkdell comes down with that. We just win the ball game right there. Tinkdell is gassed. I got Mechie on a corner out. I got Higgins down a seam. Mechie. Mechie. He's wide open. Get your ass out of bounds. Let's go. It's an iced kick. NFL, the divisional against the Browns. Comes down to an iced kick. Holy shit. Here we go, Brett. That's right down the middle. Yup. Oh, shit. That was moving fast. Not a lot of power. Good accuracy, though. It's home. And the Houston Texans are headed to the AFC Championship. Damn. Conference Championship versus the Chargers. Chargers, Derwin James, Justin Herbert, Joey Bosa, Sean Slater, Asante Samuel, Eddie Springs. There's the first new guy. Tight end. Max Kramer, left end. Daniel Bridge, left guard. Miles Sanders is a Charger. Warren Burns, Corey Lindsley, Zion Johnson, Michael Thomas, Michael Thomas, and Elijah Mitchell. The AFC Championship, the 92 overall Texans taking on the 88 overall Los Angeles Chargers. Here we go, boys. The opening drive, the Texans. I'm going to let them do it. I'm not taking over. Texans will score 7-0. to zero. We got a two-minute drill here. We end up punting. Still 7-0. to 14-0. to zero. Oh, my God. Am I not going to have to step in in the AFC Championship? Holy shit. It's a flood. Chargers fans are leaving. They paid all this money. They flew all the way to Houston. Just kidding. I don't know where this game is played. Actually, no. It is. It's in Houston. They're onside kicking. This game is over. 27-6. to 27-13. My bad. Let's see the stats. Look like Justin Herbert struggled a little bit. 18 for 30. Through an interception. CJ Stroud, not the case. 200 yards, three touchdowns. Miles Sanders rushed for the most yards. Algier was all right. CJ Stroud, 10 rushes, 28 yards. And somehow, 99 overall, Will Anderson just got an upgrade. The Super Bowl is against the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle Seahawks won it last year. We are a raw 92 overall. This is um, this is about as immaculate of a rebuild as you could get. But I think I just got lucky with how good the Texans are. I think I used too easy of a team here. Probably should have done something more different. No, this is my first ever rebuild. I'm happy to have done a team that it was very easy for look at the presentation teddy thomas to return texans are starting with the kick in the super bowl we'll start with a jet touch pass to t higgins he's really not the guy for a jet touch pass but whatever let's reward him he left cincinnati to be with us second and four the rookie is open gonna go play action here i'm looking for dalton schultz if he's there if not Let's survey the field. Ooh, Mechie. Mechie, what a ball under pressure. After a strong play action, let's run the rock. Oh, great blocks by the wide receivers. One man to beat for all. Gee. Oh, I really like. Oh, no. Oh, my God. CJ Stroud just threw one of the best balls ever under pressure. But it was just a little too covered. That, I'm kind of lucky that that didn't go haywire, to be honest. Nice work. Oh, my God. He's butt naked. Take down. Do they go to their 99 overall running back? I would. I got to blow this up. Oh, it was a read to the fullback. That he could have. Oh, my God. They're going for it. Fourth and one. They're going for it. Another run. I got to blow up Kenneth Walker. Come on. Let's go. Seven to zero. A goose egg for the Seahawks in the Super Bowl. This is real nice right now for the Houston Texans. Now it's first and 10. Seahawks look like they're about to score. We're guessing pass here. Same thing. I'm sending Odafe Owe and Willie Gay. Just going to hover the middle and guess pass. Good looks. Good. <sighs> he almost just made a crazy throw. Will Anderson, get home, buddy. Get home, Will Anderson. I need you right now. I got everything. By no. Oh, I just came off that. Shit. Let's go, Algier. Let's see the push, O-line. Great work. Good. Good work, Algier. I'm looking for Dalton Schultz here. He usually clears real well. Don't force it. Don't force it. Now take it. <gasps> Damn, the pressure got to me. I'm sorry, coach, but I got to take over on this one. Seven to seven. I trust the run game. Let's go. 
Get that edge! Great work! Oshir is in! Fourth and four! Oh my god, to run that ball, the gorilla size nuts! Talk to me. 14 to 7. We're back on offense. They had another empty drive. This whole playoff run has been about defense, man. You'd think it'd be about this offense, but it's not. So a little play action boot here. Probably had a few different things. It was a horrible ball. That uh that does not keep the drive alive. It's 14 to 7. Oh, wait a minute. They're taking over from the five. Sending a big blitz here. They are in trouble. Oh no. He had that much time. Going with the man blitz here. I'm guessing pass. I got the tight end. Oh, good defense. I'm there! Jalen Petrie! Super Bowl ending! Pick six! Is that Super Bowl MVP? Is that Super Bowl MVP? Oh my god! Jalen Petrie! Yes! One of the sickest plays ever. Shot it out, baby. Neither quarterback was particularly on today. 11 for 28. CJ Stroud, 22 for 35. The pressure got to him. Kenneth Walker, though, the 99 overall halfback held 2.3 yards per carry. That makes me so happy. Tyler Algier, 5.8 yards per carry. And he had a big touchdown. DK, 7 for 87. John Mechie, 4 for 43. But it was all defensive. Will Anderson, three TFLs, one and a half sacks. Hatchet had six. And of course, the biggest play of the game, Jalen Petrie's 90-yard pick six to seal up the Super Bowl. We're not done yet, though. I want to see Super Bowl MVP. I want to see what hands we're leaving this team in. Oh, my God. Like I said, man, after that season, our offensive line was going to get depleted. We used a lot of draft capital. Rookie offensive lineman. We got Kennard. We got Sherman, right? But Kenyon Green's the only guy left over. Shaq Mason is out. Laramie Tunzel's out. Lyle Collins is out. Dalton Schultz regresses in overall, but is still X-Factor. CJ Stroud is still an X Factor 99. Algier is great. Higgins, Tank Dell, John Mechie. The receiving core and the quarterback in backfield is still spectacular on the Texans. Offensive line is not where it needs to be. Defensively, though, Jalen Petrie is now 90 overall. Didn't get superstar. Odafe Owe is great and young. Hatchet is great and young. Vasquez is excellent and young. Carl Lawson's regressing. Will Anderson is spectacular. Ramsey will be out of here pretty soon. Dawkins, a young guy that can step in. We did not leave this team fully depleted, okay? We sold out for a Super Bowl, but it's still a spectacular team. And I'll leave you with this graphic that closes out. The one-time Super Bowl champion Houston Texans beat the Seattle Seahawks. Super Bowl MVP is Jalen Petrie. The MVP of the league was Mahomes. D'Amico Ryans gets coach of the year. CeeDee Lamb again offensive player of the year Micah Parsons again defensive player of the year and the rookies aren't with us but we did complete our challenge all right boys this is my first ever rebuild so if it sucked ass or if I made a huge mistake please let me know but I tell you what I had an amazing time I hope you guys did too and if you enjoyed it I'm gonna rebuild another team pretty soon here I love you guys thanks for watching as always I'll see you in the next video peace